Okay, I'm going to get started. It looks like the waiting room has kind of died down. Um, if anybody else joins, I'll, I'll let them in as we go. Um, I want to welcome you and thank you for getting on today to um, meet with us about just how we can best work together to benefit our students. Um, I gave this presentation back in January um, in person to um, a large number of our Coppell Conservatory families and it was um, really well received and we got a lot of positive feedback about the information that was shared. So I'm very excited to share this with you um, today. I'm not going to turn on microphones or anything like that just so that everybody can um, solely focus on what I'm saying, but I do have the chat open so if you would like to pop in there and ask any questions you're more than welcome to. Um, but otherwise, we'll begin. I'm going to share my screen here um, and go over the PowerPoint that we have. Okay. All right, so um, today we're going to go over our PowerPoint. And I am going to get this to hopefully stop recording. Turn off those closed captionings. Um, okay, so. The first thing I want to say is that I want to go over the mission of Coppell Conservatory. Um, I became the director of Coppell Conservatory almost 10 years ago now. And um, at the time, I was teaching privately in my home, but I had worked at Coppell Conservatory as a teacher from 2003 to 2007. And um, during that time, I learned tremendous information from the previous owners. and. Um, so when they invited me to um, take over for them after they were ready to retire, I was so delighted to do this and to share in their mission and their goals for the students that they originally um, founded the school for. So um, the mission of Capel Conservatory is to provide a quality music education and foster a love of acoustic piano, stringed instruments, and traditional classical music in an atmosphere where students experience culture and refinement while expressing themselves to their fullest potential. Um, that's kind of a long drawn out statement with a lot of words, but what I want to um, kind of emphasize there is that we are providing a quality music education and fostering a love of music for our students um, to, to ex express themselves and reach their fullest potential and that looks a little bit different for every student. So our private lessons especially are geared towards um, reaching each and every student and the needs that they have each and every lesson. Um, okay, um, how do we do this together is the next slide I have. And um, the way we do this is we work together as a team. You, your student's teacher, and your student. Um, and of course, I am always in the mix of that and happy to help, but really that team of weekly teacher, student, and parent is really what's the most important. Um, we achieve this mission by coming to lessons regularly and consistently, um, picking a lesson time that works best for your family schedule that you can make week in and week out is really very important. Um, our students get 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour with their teacher each week, and that instruction is so critical. Uh, arriving on time for all lessons is also really, really critical. Um, I pointed out in our January meetings that even being three minutes late to a 30 minute lesson is 10% of the instruction time. So making sure you arrive on time for all classes. We do have a very full schedule here at Coppell Conservatory because we are able to um, teach a large number of students. And so um, being on time is just really, really important. Um, the third thing in my slide here is that we have open lines of communication with the teacher. We love to see you. We love to see parents um, in our lobby. We love to see parents in our lessons. And having that open line of communication with the teacher is really your most vital resource to knowing how your student is doing and what their goals for the week are. Um, practicing consistently at home is the fourth step there. Students should be practicing anywhere from five to seven days um, at home. Attending your lesson and then waiting for, you know, three or four days after the last instruction to, to try to sit down and remember what the teacher asked you to do, even referring back to their notes can be difficult for a lot of students. And so going home and practicing that evening or the very next day is really, really important. And then continuing that consistent practice. 
Um, within my studio, I would much prefer students to practice 15 to 20 minutes daily than one big long um, practice session the night before the lesson. Okay, I think they're going to make a lot more progress that way. Um, the next thing that I would say that um, we want is we just want parent encouragement and supervision, and that will really also help with their progress. Um, that does not mean you have to sit with them for every minute of their practice, but making sure that they're doing their practice um, is really important. We a lot of times get asked, you know, well, my student isn't very self-motivated to practice. And, and that's fine. That's normal. Um, I personally was not always self-motivated to practice, but with consistent encouragement and supervision from my parents, I made sure I got the job done on those days that it was most difficult. And, um, you know, they just made sure that I was, I was at the piano and doing what I was asked um, without having to, to nitpick every aspect of my lesson or my practice, excuse me. Um, so these things here that I've listed are really, really important in working together to achieve that, that goal of every student reaching their fullest potential, okay? We'll go on. Um, talking about practice um, is, is so important, and it's something that I think, you know, as teachers, we know what that should look like. Um, but if you've never had a student in lessons before, or you maybe didn't take lessons yourself, um, you may not know what good practice looks like at home. Um, and so I want to make sure that all of our students know that and have the proper tools at home to be able to, to do this. Um, daily scheduled practice is really important, like I mentioned. Students practicing one big chunk for an hour right before their, their next lesson isn't as effective as daily scheduled practice, um, spending 15 to 20 minutes every day. Um, provide the proper instrument for your students. So this looks different for every student, potentially. Um, our, our violin students should have a music stand that is at eye level for them so that they can properly hold their violin while they're while they're practicing. Um, our guitar students should have a footstool at home to practice with and probably a tuner to practice with as well um, to make sure that their instrument is in the condition that it should be to, to practice. Um, most of our students should also have a metronome. There are free apps for this that you can download to an iPhone or an iPad um, or any Android device too. Um, I personally like the old fashioned, you know, turn it on with the button and, and it just ticks away there with it like a nice dial knob. Um, but we can help you pr to get these instrument, these things if you, if you don't have them at home. But that is always very important. Students in piano lessons must have a keyboard at home to practice with. Um, you do not have to have an acoustic piano, um, but as students progress, I recommend that you look into um, to doing that at some point. Um, there is a difference between a, a, a keyboard and an acoustic piano, like what we teach in all our lessons. Um, students should have a quiet space free from distractions. So practicing while the TV is on or while other conversations are going on in that same room um, can be challenging for students for them to not only block out what's going on around them, but then really focus on what they need to be um, doing for their for their practice and, and it could just inevitably extend the practice time or make it not quite as effective. So a quiet space free from distractions is very important. Um, many of you have probably seen, I hope, the assignment notebook that is provided to our students. This is really, really critical. I implemented this practice of using these assignment notebooks for all of our students a couple of years ago because I want the students to be reading their assignments and looking at the notebook every day. And I want the teachers to be writing thorough notes for them to, to practice with as well, because I think that will help their practice. Um, so each, each lesson, your teacher does write your assignment down, whether it is um, technical exercises or warm ups that need to be done at the beginning of practice to either warm up your fingers, warm up your voice, um, as well as assignments and what needs to be done with that. I'll show you an example of what my students' notebooks look like when they go home from a lesson here in a minute. But reading that and having that out for students is critical. Um, practice should be working towards a specific goal. Um, too many times and too, too often I hear students say, oh, I, how do I practice? I practice you know, just playing my piece from beginning to end. 
and beginning to end practice doesn't really um, isolate maybe problem spots or, or issues that the student may be having or needing to focus on. So I recommend working towards a specific goal. For example, taking four measures at a time and playing them five times in a row correctly. When you are able to, to break up your music and divide it into small parts like this, you're able to see every element and really think about every element. If you're playing a piece that is 40 measures long, um, you know, if you make a mistake in measure three, by the time you get to measure 40, you've forgotten what that was specifically. So this really helps to eliminate mistakes um, and, and also to kind of cut down on the amount of time students maybe are spending at the at their instrument if they are doing it in in a in a focused environment because if they get their their section five times in a row correctly they can move on they don't have to sit there and do it over and over for 20 minutes um again i mentioned parent supervision it should look like we know that the student is practicing we're hearing the music that they're they've been working on in those practice sessions and you are hearing hopefully some type of section and metronome practice at home if needed okay and then always communication with the teacher if there are any questions about at home practice expectations or requirements. And um, again, that notebook is sent home, but if you do not understand something that is written in there or your student doesn't understand that, it is always very, very helpful to reach out in between lessons to, to ask those questions either of the teacher or sometimes myself if, if needed. All right, so we utilize the assignment notebook and I told you that this was an important element that that we added to our curriculum a couple of years ago because I found that the students really needed consistency in, in what they were reading at home. So the weekly assignment is written personally for your student by the teacher. Um, this is exactly what your student individually needs. Um, the other things that are in this notebook that you should be looking at are um, Zoom information. If you need to be on Zoom for, for using that makeup option, that is all in the front of that notebook. I will make note here that we do still want you to con contact our office if you need to be on Zoom so we can make sure the teacher also knows in advance of the lesson, but that information in, is in your notebook. There's also a calendar of our scheduled closings. So, um, you know, we're closed for spring break next week. That it, That is noted in your notebook so you always know when you will and will not have lessons. Um, our performance class dates are listed in the notebook as well. Those are times where students can perform for either myself or uh, Ms. Kreider in the piano department or some of our other experienced teachers in the guitar, violin, and voice areas. Um, and those, those classes are open to all private lesson students, so we list those dates in there so that you know um, when they are and if you want your student to participate that, that, that you can mark the calendar and talk to the teacher about that. Um, at the very back, there's a repertoire list so your student can keep kind of a running tab of all of the pieces they've completed or memorized for that specific school year. Um, and at the bottom of each lesson page, so there's 42 pages of lesson assignment pages because that's how many weeks we have um, of lessons in our school year. There's a practice record for your student to write down the minutes that they've practiced as well as an, a memo box. Um, I use this memo box to communicate important information to parents almost weekly. Um, and a lot of teachers do, we'll put your festival performance times in that memo box. Um, this week I noted that we have no lessons next week because of spring break. Those types of communications, um, that memo box there is for that. Okay. Um, this is an example of what my students' lesson books look like when they go home um, after the end of a lesson. So you can see here, I have utilized the um, upcoming events and reminders. I needed her to complete something at home, and I wanted her to make sure that, you know, mom and dad saw that so that it got done. Um, so I utilized that. Also, um, you can see I've clearly written out her three pieces, and um, I've written any goals that need to be done for that week. Um, you'll notice that there's some metronome markings written um, in under the Sonatina and the Sicilian, and also just some articulation or other other notes that she needs to pay attention to. Okay, so if, you're, if your notebooks are not looking similar to this, um, that's a question that I would be happy to answer. I do write a lot. I'm very, very detailed in mine. Um, I've always been like that in my teaching. 
but um, you know, each teacher's is going to look slightly different from this, but this is what mine look like. Okay. Um, so now that we've covered a little bit of practice and you're going to see a lot of um, progress when you're supervising your students a little bit more in their practice and we've talked about what a, a good notebook looks like. So what a good assignment looks like for your students. Um, once they start working towards these goals, then more and more opportunities become available to your students. Um, we offer both private lessons and group piano here at Coppell Conservatory, and um, you'll see from this chart that there's opportunities in both areas for performance, um, but they do vary slightly. So in our group piano classes, you know, they get that one-on-one -on -one weekly and group instruction. Um, and they do two performances a year. They do an open house performance in December and a spring recital that's coming up in just a few weeks where they do get to utilize our recital hall. Um, for our private lessons, there is um, a lot more opportunity for performance here because the students are working one on one every week with um, with their teacher and they do make a little bit faster progress in the private lessons because of that. Um, so we have performance class opportunities, as I mentioned, these are for all of our private lesson um, areas and they just provide an opportunity for students to learn performance skills, learn how to have recital etiquette, um, as well as, you know, be able to go on from a mistake in front of an audience. It's very, very important for them to be able to learn these skills. Um, Again, the piano ones are done by myself or our um, assistant director, Ms. Kreider, and then the other instruments are done by, by the other teachers because that is their area of expertise. Um, for our piano, as well as violin and voice and guitar students, we have festivals. Um, there are festivals for our guitar, violin, and voice students that are sponsored through Coppell Conservatory, which means that I'm the one in charge of all of the scheduling for that. I bring in the judges. Um, and so that umbrella of, of kind of, you know, who's running it is, is here with our administration. Um, for our piano events, we actually utilize Carrollton Music Teachers Association, um, which is a little bit bigger umbrella um, of just preparing for things and, and bringing in judges that, that they have on their staff. Um, and our students perform for a judge in each of these events and they get constructive feedback and a rating through that um, with the opportunity to earn a ribbon, okay? We have recital opportunities for all of our instruments. We do our big spring recitals in May. Those are fairly formal, um, meaning it's a lot of classical music, like I mentioned in our mission. Um, all the students need to have their pieces fully memorized at those events, um, and they typically tend to last about 45 to 60 minutes, depending on the number of students we have on each of those programs. Um, we also have other fun recital opportunities for our private lessons throughout the year. We do holiday recitals in December, as well as um, Halloween recitals. There's lots of fun Halloween music out there that we'll do where the kids come in costume. Um, CMTA also hosts contests. Um, and I want to just point out here um, kind of the difference between what a recital or a festival is and what a contest is. Um, if your student has not been invited to a contest yet, you um, are probably wondering what the difference is. And, and really what it is, is that there is a very specific repertoire list that students must choose from. Um, this varies contest to contest. It can be either that it is by grade level. So we have a piano one coming up in April, and this is done by grade level. Students in second grade are all competing against other second graders, for example. Um, and they have to play a very specific piece. So all second graders are playing the same piece. And what happens at these contests is they are not just judged on their own merits necessarily. They are judged on their own merits and then compared to the other students around them. So there's only one winner. There's typically a, like a first through fourth place awarded and maybe honorable mentions. But these students um, are competing essentially against other students rather than just getting feedback on their own performance and um, like they do at festivals. So at festivals, every student can go in and play beautifully and receive the top mark. At a contest, only one student is the winner there. Um, so that is typically reserved for our more serious practicers, our, our students who are a little bit more engaged in, in lessons, or maybe that's their only extracurricular 
um, activity that they do. But if you are interested in exploring that, there is a contest um, probably for just about all of our students, depending on um, which contest you pick. And the other thing that we provide here is Royal Conservatory exams. I'm not going to really touch on this too much. If you have more questions about this, I'd be happy to send you some more information later. Um, but this is, again, for our very most serious students, preparing for these exams takes anywhere from nine to 12 months to um, achieve all of the goals of, of the syllabus for each level. And so um, it is a nationally recognized program. There is a very strict syllabus that we follow. Um, and we have a large number of teachers who have participated in this in the past. Um, it is quite a bit more expensive as well. So um, again, I'm not gonna touch too much on it here, um, but if you have questions about it, I'd be happy to answer it at any point, okay? And then I did mention already the festivals through Coppell Conservatory for all of our other instruments. Um, and we've had a lot of success implementing those in the last few years, and I think the students really enjoy them. All right. Um, I want to take a brief moment to just mention our musicianship classes as well, if you were unaware of these classes. Um, it is such a wonderful opportunity for your students um, in private lessons to engage in a little bit more of a social setting. Um, these classes meet for 45 minutes once a week in addition to the private lesson. And the, the main focus of these classes is teaching a foundation in music theory, score reading, um, whether that's guitar or, or piano or violin or voice um, music. It, it really helps to um, teach them how to analyze everything that they're seeing in their own music and private lessons. Um, we work on oral skills, so listening, um, you know, what interval are you hearing? What, um, you know, what scale are, are you are you hearing in this piece? Um, that kind of thing, if the piece is happy or sad and how do you identify that? as well as ensemble playing. So students play um, as a group. For piano, we do a big ensemble recital at the end of April every year. And this is a really fun time for them to kind of come out of their comfort zone of solo playing like they do in their private lessons and work towards um, playing as a group, which takes a very, very different skill set of, again, listening to your um, fellow players and making sure everybody is really in the same tempo and counting together. Um, this is something that I brought into the conservatory, the ensemble playing um, when I came over because um, I always did this as, um, as a child when I was taking lessons and it's one of my most fondest memories of lessons is working with um, other musicians my age to play an ensemble. Um, performance class is included in musicianship. So when those performance class weeks come up, your student is already automatically enrolled during their musicianship time. And there are never any extra charges for performance class. So right, right there, that's a great value for, um, for your money. And it, it's great to just know that your student is automatically registered for performance class. You don't have to find an extra time that week to come up here as well. Um, the kids really get to know each other well and form friendships. We have um, a class of ninth and 10th graders this year. I think they have been together in the same class since probably third grade. So these kids are friends as well, um, which, which really makes it fun as a teacher to, to really kind of see their relationships grow and then mature um, as, they, as they get older and start working on harder things in their music theory and their ensemble playing. Um, just so you know, the class is $31 a month in addition to your private lesson tuition, but it, that's for 45 minutes um, every week that we're in session as well. If you are interested in this, I would love for you to reach out to me either in the chat or um, through an email, and we would be happy to um, talk you through the opportunities there. We do have um, musicianship available for all of our instruments, piano, violin, guitar, and voice. Okay, um, the next thing I want to talk about is makeup lessons. And um, this is really, really important to me. It's very important to our staff. Um, and it's really very important to your student too. Um, I'm a parent and I have two kiddos who are involved in music, but they're also involved in other things like sports um, as well. And, and I know that sometimes things come up. Sometimes kids get sick. Sometimes you have 
a choir concert scheduled on the same night as your lesson, those types of things. And um, so our staff and specifically Ms. Kreider and I, um, over the last couple of years have really spent a lot of time doing a lot of research about what other schools our size do, as well as what we feel is the best for our students specifically here. Um, so you have two options when it comes to having kind of a conflict with your lessons. Um, the first is that you can get on Zoom, just like we are today, at any time during um, the school year. So there is no limit to this. You can do it as many weeks as you need to. Obviously, we encourage you to come in person as often as possible, but we do know that sometimes something comes up. Maybe you get stuck at a work meeting or, um, you know, maybe they came home from school with a little bit of an earache, but so they don't want to go out, but, you know, they feel okay enough to get online. Um, and so that Zoom option is great. You just get online, you get that notebook out for us that you've got at home and um, set your camera up and we can conduct that lesson um, on Zoom. The pandemic taught us lots of, of things and the, the ability to utilize this technology is definitely one of the biggest benefits of that. So um, that is always an option. You can always also submit a video to your teacher. So what we do is we um, submit a, a video you record the assignment again refer back to that notebook to make sure you've got everything included that your teacher has assigned um, you can make a recording of that any assigned pieces technical exercises anything like that um, and then upload it on the form on our website um, and then your teacher will utilize your lesson time to watch the video take notes and submit feedback to you um, my students do this. I had a student just yesterday who had to do this, and um, I spend the entire lesson most times watching the video, pausing the video, taking notes, um, writing things that I want the student to do, assigning something new. Maybe I need them to get faster this week. And, and so they get all of that information from me without having to wait another week. Um, so it's a really, really beneficial option um, in place of an in-person lesson if needed. Um, Again, you can submit this as many times as you need to, but also, you know, please note that um, if you're having trouble making your lessons because of a scheduling conflict, um, we prefer you to be in person. So maybe check with our office about changing your lesson time if, if needed. Okay. All right. Um, I do have an example of a, a makeup video here. Um, I am going to send this out. I'm not going to show it today, but I'm going to send this PowerPoint out so you can click on that link and see it. But in the video, basically, it's well lit. We can see your students full body in this in this specific instance. It's piano. So we want to be able to see the whole instrument in their hands as well as their body posture. He announces what he's playing, which is really helpful just in case the teacher, um, you know, needs help getting to that that spot in the book or anything like that. And it's been uploaded with one link that is viewable to anybody who has the link. So these are just a couple of notes to make if you are recording a video. Okay. Again, I'll send this out rather than playing it here today. Um, I'll send it out to you guys so that you can watch that if, if you're wondering what you want your video to look like when you submit. Okay. If you have any questions about our makeup videos, Ms. Kreider is in charge of all of the makeup videos. Um, she is the one who monitors those coming in and um, make sure the teacher gets that information and is also submitting their feedback in a really timely manner. So um, if you have questions about like, you know, was my video received or I didn't receive the feedback, can you check on this? She is the one to reach out to about this. Um, and her email is there on the screen. Again, I'll send this out so you'll have that email if you um, did not jot it down. Again, I know makeups can be, you know, kind of a sticky situation. You, you, I know you want your child to be here every week. Um, over the course of the last couple of years, we've really tried to update our policies to be reflective of the best way for students to get continuous instruction week to week. Um, and with the number of students we have and the way our schedules um, are set up here at Coppell Conservatory, that really is, is the, best, the best answer. Okay. Um, just a couple other notes on absences. Our um, administrator, Christine, asked me to kind of add some of this stuff here because um, this is something that she um, encounters kind of on a day-to-day -day basis. But um, notifying 
the office of an absence as soon as possible or in in the need of a zoom lesson as soon as possible is really very important um once our teachers start teaching in the afternoon three o'clock three thirty um it's really really hard for them to check emails um because they are in back-to-back -back lessons and so notifying the office where they are continually answering phones and checking emails um, is really an important way for us to be able to get the message to our students okay um, you can email or call the office either one is fine we don't have to have it in writing um, and then if you do want to be on zoom we do ask that you notify notify our office an hour before your lesson and um, the reason for this is that, um, you know, again, your teachers are teaching and so they don't always have immediate access to open up Zoom. Um, sometimes they need to maybe power up a device. Sometimes I know when I get on, it says, oh, now I have to update it. And so we just need a little bit of, of time to set that up if, if that's the case. And um, Zoom requires two-factor authentication now. So if they haven't been on Zoom in a couple days, it's gonna ask for that. So they're gonna have to kind of go back and forth between email and the, and the Zoom to make sure they've got all that set up. So we just ask that you give us about an hour's notice so that we can get the message to the teacher in between lessons and that they can be on right at the start of your lesson. Okay, um, a quick note on makeup videos. Um, we, we ask that they be submitted before the lesson. Um, and we ask that they be honestly submitted about three o'clock the day before the, or the day of the lesson. Um, and I know that's early because your student may not be home from school yet. So we ask that they record um, the night before if needed. Um, once we start teaching at three o'clock, again, it's hard for us to go in and see that a makeup video has been submitted. Okay, so we like to get those by three o'clock so that the teacher has them before they start teaching. If you cannot do that for any reason, say your kiddo comes home from sit from school sick and you really you know want that feedback still for the week and they're feeling better in a couple of days, that's great. And we can still utilize the makeup video option at that time. Just note that um, myself or Ms. Kreider will probably observe those vid videos. Um, at that time because it will be outside of the the contracted lesson time that you have with that teacher um but i promise we do great work we um spend just as much time as we would on our own private students reviewing those videos and typing up feedback so you'll get um you'll get great feedback and, and new instruction okay all right um i'm going to talk briefly about summer scheduling it is feels like it's right around the corner with spring break coming up and we've already started working on our summer um schedules and calendars but um i just want to make a quick note and we'll touch more on this when we do parent conferences in april for all of our students that summer enrollment whenever possible is really really valuable um, they make continued progress with no lapsing of their skills during the summer. Um, students who are taking off all of June and July, we really spend a good portion of August remembering, you know, all of the all of the note reading and all of the the skills that we maybe had um, finally mastered by the end of the spring semester. And then we we just we regress a little bit if we don't have those consistent lessons. So I encourage you, if at all possible, to continue in summer lessons. Um, you are able to maintain your, your current teacher and your lesson day and time if you stay in summer lessons, um, as opposed to you know forfeiting that lesson day and time with your teacher um, for withdrawing students so that teachers can maintain their income with new students over the summer. Um, we do offer flexible scheduling. So the makeup options I mentioned before are only during August to May. Um, but in the summer, we are very happy to, to work around your travel plans, summer camp plans, anything like that, and reschedule lessons at your convenience. Um, the only thing we really ask is that you give us 24 hours notice to do that so that we are, are able to, to find a suitable lesson time for you. Um, if teachers are left here just waiting for a student who doesn't show up, that, that does um, pose a problem. So we ask for 24 hours notice, okay? Um, one of the things that our students really work on in the summer is preparing for those early fall events. We have a, a fall festival for piano that happens um, in October, as well as a contest that happens um, in very early October. So we um, are able to start that music right away in June, and those students really have been able to prepare over the summer. 
Um, we also have strings festival that happens um, in early October as well. And so same thing for those guitar and violin students. Um, they're able to to start working on that music then and be very, very prepared by the September performance classes that we have. Okay. Um, one note is we teach for seven weeks in the summer and we are able to typically work out a lot of lesson accommodations. So if you're in town for even two or three weeks of our teaching schedule, maybe a couple of weeks in June, you're here and then you're gone the rest of the summer, we're really typically able to to work around your schedule so that you can retain that same lesson time with your teacher and and at least get started on um, on our goals for the fall. Okay. And again, we'll talk about that more in parent conferences coming up soon. Um, okay, this is um, a great slide. I think it's really, really important because sometimes you're not sure. You may have a question, but don't know who to ask. Um, we Basically, there's four, four structures here that we um, have set up at our school as far as um, administration and, and communication goes. The front office is who you should contact regarding scheduling, um, if you need to make a schedule change, or billing. She is, um, Christine is the one who handles all of our billing. If you're going to be absent or just have general lesson questions about maybe any of our policies, anything like that, um, contacting the front office is the best way to do that, either by phone or email. Um, contact your teacher directly if you have questions about event registration, lesson progress, or assignments. Okay, each one of our teachers has their own Capel Conservatory email. So it's their first name initial and then their full last name um, at coppellconservatory.com. And they are the ones who are best able to answer your questions about lesson progress. Um, a lot of times parents will email me about how is their student doing? And the first thing I need to do is if I haven't heard them recently in performance class, um, I have to go talk to the teacher. So they're really the first, first resource there. Um, I mentioned event registration also, because if a student is preparing for any of those events I mentioned earlier, um, the teacher is responsible for registering your student for those events. Um, and so you need to contact your teacher about any scheduling preferences you may have or questions you have about if your student is participating or what they're playing for those events. Okay. Um, our assistant director, Danielle Kreider, is um, available to answer questions, like I mentioned before, about makeup lessons, but also about musicianship. She has been teaching musicianship here for over 10 years, and um, she is really kind of our director of musicianship, so she helps to place students in the proper class, and she can answer those questions for you. Okay, and then you can reach me. I am here all the time, and I am available for any unresolved concerns. Um, if you have questions, general questions about CMTA or, or general event questions, I'm happy to answer those. Um, I do all of the recital scheduling, so this is a big job coming up um, in April and May for me. So that all of that goes through me. Um, and if you are not receiving our emails, um, please make sure you're checking for your for our emails through your junk folder. I send out communication all the time if your students are participating in events. Um, I also send out emails just about, you know, general opportunities for our students. And so please make sure you're getting our emails. Okay. Seeing a few things come in in the chat and I'll answer all those questions at the end, just so you know, I'm not ignoring them. Okay. Um, if you have emailed your teacher and you have not heard from them within about 24 hours, um, then you can always come to me too, um, with those questions and I will, I will make sure we get the answer for you. Okay. Um, if you have not been on our website, please visit our website, coppellconservatory.com. Um, just in August, I revamped it a little bit, and we have, um, it, it looks wonderful. And there's so much information on there about dates of events, dates of performance classes. Um, our teacher bios are all on there, as well as links to most of their Zooms. Um, just a lot of information about, about what is going on at Coppell Conservatory. Again, you find our mission statement on there, and, um, and that is really a great place to, to find information. The other thing is following us on social media. So I mentioned getting my emails, that's really, really important, but if you're not following us on social media and you have social media, I really, really encourage you to do so. Um, this is my favorite place to post um, just quick updates about our students. Um, if they're 
you know, receiving an award, um, then I like to post that on there. Um, I, I consistently support Kapow ISD choirs and band students. And, and so I, when I see our students receiving accolades from Kapow ISD, I like to share those things. Um, I'll also put deadlines and upcoming events and, and all sorts of stuff on our social media. So if you haven't been on there, um, I encourage you to, to follow us on those accounts because it really will give you a lot of quick little reminders about things that are, are really important, okay? Um, if you have questions, and I'm going to go to the chat now um, to, to answer, then we will go over those. Let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, okay, so I'm going to go over these questions now, and then if you guys have any more, feel free to um, put them in the messages here, like very specific questions, okay? Um, the first question is elaborating on the benefits of participating in these festivals, um, how it will be helpful for their, their studies and their career. So um, this, this is a great question, and um, it's one that I'm very happy to answer. Our festivals are really an opportunity for students to um, do a number of things. The first thing is they are able to hone their performance skills. Um, this is really important. Um, and I, I say that because it's really important, not just in their one specific performance, but it's important for like what I'm doing today, giving a talk in front of people. Um, so later in life, when they have to give a presentation at school or in college or in their jobs, they're learning these performance skills, how to continue on if you stumble for a moment. Um, but they also receive feedback and ratings from um, really respected fellow musicians in this area. We are so fortunate to to live in this community because we have the the benefit of University of North Texas, SMU, TCU, um, all of these um, University of Texas at Arlington, just a lot of universities that have wonderful music programs. And um, and so these professors who are seeing collegiate students every day in, day out, are actually coming to judge our students in these festivals. Um, I'm just going to share this one anecdote about that because um, I think it's really important for you to maybe hear. So not only are these, these professors willing to spend their time with our students, but they're giving them collegiate level feedback. Um, when I was probably about seventh grade, I um, participated in an event kind of like this. Um, back then it was called guild auditions and so i came and i had my music prepared and my judge was dr david carp who to this day is still a professor at smu and he looked at me after i gave my audition and he said have you considered going into music and i was not even thinking about college yet but just that connection um got me started thinking about maybe this is something that i could do and i i want to do going forward and and his encouragement and his willingness to share his time and his knowledge with a younger student really just started my wheels turning that this is something I wanted to do. And I remind him of that story, um, honestly, as often as I possibly see him, because it really it impacted my future in so many ways. Um, and so these same professors are are doing those things for our students in these festivals. Um, just last weekend, our, our guitar judge was um, a guitar professor from, um, he was originally, initially from UT Tyler, and now he's moved to um, the Dallas Community College area um, to be closer in this DFW area, but he's, you know, he's teaching collegiate level students. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing about these festivals that is really, really important is that, um, you know, they can put them on their resume. They are building a resume. Um, basically from the time they start high school. And participating in these events shows a vested and continued interest in, in music. And this is very, very highly looked upon. Um, college admissions officers know that music study takes a lot of independence. It takes a lot of perseverance. Um, it takes a lot of inde independent practice and um, these are things they're looking for in college students because they know that these students, if they've gained these skills in the high school level, 
they can be successful living on their own in college. So um, listing these and listing your ratings, um, whether it is just a festival that we sponsor here or through CMTA or a contest where you can list that you participated or won an award, um, and you can show that consistently throughout your high school years, it really um, is, is something that shows that, that perseverance and that dedication to a craft um, of any type. So that's really, really important as well. Um, and it gives the students a goal to work towards. That's kind of my final note on why festivals are helpful and important. Um, when students have a goal to work towards, they continue to, um, to make that progress more consistently. If we just told them they could finish a piece whenever they were ready, um, I think the progress would be a little bit less urgent. And so they, you know, they know that this deadline is coming up of a performance class um, or something like that. And so they are, are preparing for those goals and their teachers helping them to set those practice goals so that they can get something done by a date. Okay. Um, I think that answer hopefully answers that questions. If it didn't, um, feel free to drop another question in the chat there. Um, I see that there's a question about adult group piano. And um, that is something that um, we had done quite a bit before COVID and then kind of it tailed off during that time when parents were so busy taking you know, care of their homes at that, you know, during the, those years. Um, but I will make note of, um, of why, you know, that, that there's some interest in that and um, getting to back to that group piano. We do offer adult private lessons as well. This is not just for students um, or school age students, but adults as well. So we're happy to, um, to accommodate students um, of any level of any age. All right, um, will guitar kids start having contests and festivals under some state levels similar to CMTA? So what I will say about that is um, there are certain contests that are available to guitar students. Um, and these are mostly our older guitar students at this time. There really is just a limited amount of um, kind of organization around guitar and violin um, students a little bit more than piano. It's just, it's just a bigger population of students who take piano um, just across the state. And so that's why those contests are available through CMTA. Um, and that's why we implemented our own um, contests here. We do invite outside um, students from other schools and other um, teachers to participate in those as well, because I do think that is you know, a really healthy thing for students to hear other students from other areas as well. Um, but if you're interested in that, again, one of the things I would recommend is talking specifically to your teacher um, about, you know, goals for your student and if you want them to participate in um, in any any festivals or contests like that at the state level. There are, we, Mr. Tominski had a couple of guitar students go just last weekend to um, a youth guitar competition. So there, there are things available. Um, sometimes we just have to look a little bit harder for them, okay? Um, or is there a curriculum which you can share with parents? Um, so, you know, there is a curriculum. It, but it varies from student to student. Um, you know, a lesson book that works for five students may not work for the next five. Um, it may not be the one that motivates them. And so we do vary our curriculum based on um, student needs. Um, typically, you'll see a lot of our piano students starting in piano adventures books. Um, and as they gradually move through those lesson and performance books, they um, tend to graduate to more um, supplemental, is what I call it, material, um, books that might have more classical literature in it by famous composers. Um, in our guitar program, a lot of them start same thing in the FJH books, um, lesson books, and they work through those. Um, and then once they get there for our classical guitar students, um, they, they move on to what um, is, is written by Sagreras. There's a lot of etudes and exercises that they work on for classical guitar. Um, our violin teachers utilize Suzuki methods a lot as well. So there is a lot of kind of very standard methods that we use um, that are very well known in the teaching world. And as students progress through those, then we branch out from there to um, you know, more classical repertoire and classical literature. Um, that becomes, you know, more challenging. Um, 
these are things to ask your private lesson teacher when we do conferences or even before conferences if you're questioning you know if your student is progressing at the rate that you know they feel that they're capable of then um you know you definitely want to talk to your teacher about that specifically um if i've just seen a student in performance class a lot of times i can help answer those questions but your teacher is, is the first one because they're seeing them week in and week out um you know and and every kid is different so you know i have students who have been studying with me for eight years 10 years and you know they all get to kind of a different place at the end of of their journey depending on what other interests they have um, what other you know activities pull them in, in other directions as well as how much time they spend practicing um, but most of my students and my my wish for all of our students is that they conclude their high school studies with us so they they finish in 12th grade we have a huge celebration for our, our seniors um, and a special recital for them because music studies is honestly lifelong I still take lessons um, I still learn new music as well um, along alongside my students. And so um, I just want to kind of encourage you to know that each student is going to make slightly different progress week to week, depending on their at home practice, their parent involvement and, um, and you know, and what other activities are pulling them in other directions, but that that's OK and that they're doing, you know, if, if they're enjoying it and they're we're fostering a love of music in them, then then that is our goal. OK. Um, how many times a year do we get to have parent conferences? We typically do one in the fall, um, and that kind of just outlines, um, you know, we, we ask you to come in during the first five to 10 minutes of your student's lesson. Um, sometimes that will outline just what the students are working on um, for the year. And then we do a, a little bit more in-depth one in April, and that's when we talk about their progress for this past year, what our goals are for the future, as well as summer scheduling. Um, but again, you are welcome and invited to attend any lesson with your student. Um, you are welcome to check in at the very end of the lesson with your teacher as well to have what I like to refer to as mini conferences. Um, I love to talk to my parents when um, I finish a lesson. I love to tell them what we worked on that day, if there's anything new that they need to focus on. And so getting that, that feedback week to week is really important as well. So if you have the ability to park the car and come in, um, or if you, you know, even want to ask your student, hey, ask your teacher to come out and talk to me for just one minute after lessons, um, then I think that's really, really important. And, and checking in with your teacher week to week is very important, okay? Um, I'm not seeing any other questions. I'll just leave it up for a minute if anybody else has anything else. Um, I would love for you to, um, you know, just share this information with your students as well, um, knowing what you learned today. And I know that you know, you may not have had lessons yourself and that, you know, a lot of this is foreign, but we want to help. We want your student to succeed. Um, I dearly love each of our students here and want the very, very best for them. Um, if there were any questions I didn't answer today, I'm more than happy to um, get an email from you, get a phone call, um, anything like that, and, and, and chat through anything that you do have questions about going forward. Um, I know I mentioned a lot of information, so again, I will send out the um, slides from today for everybody who is present, and um, that way you can review those again, okay? Um, I see a little bit more information about musicianship. We'll send that out as well, okay, to you. Um, and, and again, you can contact... Um, Ms. Kreider about musicianship, she can help place your student. Um, just one quick note about that for piano students, we are not placing new students in musicianship until May because we are currently working on ensembles, okay? Um, thank you all for joining me, taking time out of your, your day or your work day to um, gain a little bit more knowledge um, about your student's lesson and just know that your teachers and I and, and, and all of our, our staff are really, um, just wanting the best for your student. We adore them and um, we want to work together with you to make every lesson and every at-home practice um, a big success. All right. Thank you so much.